if I can go t- down the the rabbit hole in terms of minutia, uh, you're gonna be like, I don't know, man. This was thirty years. Ago. Well, you, so there are seven chevrons in the sequence, but there are nine on the gate. Uh, were there plans for the other two chevrons? Was it just a design aesthetic? The nine looked better. No, no. We the original plan of the movie was to do three movies. And so there was going to be three major addresses. And that's why we needed the nine. Um, but we never got to do parts two and three. Got it. So the second film would have included an eight Chevron address? Well, it would, have nine? Included, it would have included one of the other Chevrons that was not in the original. Ah, I see. So one of the Chevrons is for one. Okay. Interesting. So each Chevron had to, of the three that were remaining on the end had to do with a different, a different location. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So the Stargate was going to go in other places. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we had big plans for it, but we, we never got to explore it. Which of you came up with the, the idea of the gate itself originally? Neither of us. So what happened was this. Uh, I was an actor in a movie that Roland had done. And I had ended up, it's a long story, but I ended up doing some rewriting on that. And he ended up liking my writing. And we started to work together doing scripts. And as we were looking at projects to do, he kept telling me about a a project that he'd been working on since he was in film school called Necropol. And what it was about was, it was about a, a spaceship that was buried underneath the Great Pyramid of Giza. And he had these great scenes where these children are lured there at night and they vanish and everything. But he'd never really flushed it out, but he really loved this idea of a spaceship buried under the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I had been working on something that was very rough in my head that I, I jokingly would call Lawrence of Arabia in outer space. <laughs> and in mine, it was two, it was a good guy, bad guy who were chasing each other um, uh, in space and they go through a wormhole, but the good guy, he hesitates for five seconds before he follows him in. But those five seconds end up being 30 years on the other side when he lands. And by then the villain has taken over this other world. There's a time change. Okay. So that was my project. Necropole was his project. And we said, maybe there's some way to kind of connect these together and turn it into one project. And uh, a, a wonderful production designer named Oliver Scholl, uh, he was hearing our idea and he said, he said, you know, there's a device that's, that's used very often in science fiction literature, but not that often in science fiction films. And he said, it's the, the teleportation device. You know, we saw it in the fly and of course it was in Star Trek, but you don't really see it as often as we see it in, in, in literature. And that's when it just snapped and said, that's how we connect these two movies. It's the Stargate. It's the thing that it's the teleportation device. And it was originally triangular, wasn't it? There were yeah, several, perfect. several versions of that. That's right. Was that a, a pyramid echo? Yeah, exactly. Wow. But then, but then when Roland came up with the idea of how the uh, chevrons would align and yeah. move in, then, then the, we knew the triangle wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, the, and also uh, the circle, one of the most universal symbols in the world. So yeah. there's, there's something to be said to that too. Um, did the, did the whole gate spin on set or was it just sections of it? The inner ring. I'm, I'm losing you a little bit there. Can you please repeat? Uh, uh, Kit West was our, uh, the entire inner circle, uh, spun. Okay. It was built by, uh, our floor effects guy named Kit West who had done the Raiders of the Lost Ark movies. Ah. And so it, it was a really functioning device on set and the, the chevrons that clicked in and the inner circle spinning. That was all. Uh, that was all practical. My oh my! And uh, so, uh, thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.